President Trump's top economic advisors have returned home from a two-day visit to Beijing with little more than glaring proof of how far apart the two countries stand on trade issues. Let's get to our China correspondent Tom McKenzie joining us now with a recap of what really happened the last couple of days. And Tom, what, if anything, was achieved? Very little, other than that they're going to continue to talk, although we don't know when they're going to start those talks again or where. Uh, but as you say, really, what this showed, these two days of talks, was just how diametrically opposed both the U.S. and China are on some of these major issues. So the U.S. Uh, producing a list of demands, including that China reduce its trade surplus by $200 billion by 2020, and that it stop its support for its industrial policy around things like automation, AI, robotics, electric vehicles. So two areas where China had drawn a line in the sand. The U.S. also saying that China should refrain from retaliatory tariffs of its own. For its part, China demanded from the U.S. that they stop this investigation into Chinese investments around sensitive technology and that also the U.S. lower the barriers around exports of tech to China. Again, flying in the face, really, of the political views in Washington. It's one issue that seems to unite both Democrats and Republicans is taking a harder line on China, particularly uh, around technology. So it seems there's a long way to go to reconcile these two views on both sides. Yeah, it seems like both sides aren't really willing to budge right now. And the big question is, where did the two sides go from here? Have we seen enough progress when it comes to negotiations, Tom, where we have at least delayed the U.S. Uh, repositioning or actually imposing those tariffs? Well, that's the issue, because, of course, the clock is ticking on these tariffs. May the 22nd is when uh, the, the debate in the U.S. Uh, can kind of comes to an end and when Trump can trigger the first $50 billion worth of tariffs. And we heard from Trump over the weekend saying that he was going to and is determined to rework the trade relationship uh, with China. Uh, interestingly, though, we heard from the state media here taking a slightly more positive view, saying that there was consensus found at these negotiations even if there were disagreements, which may point potentially to China's uh, continued desire to avoid a trade war and want to pursue this through negotiations. So clearly, you know, time is running out. And we heard from Eswar Prasad from Cornell University, a China expert there, saying that we should expect markets, uh, that there are going to be growing tensions now between these two sides. He's saying, look, China's ready to negotiate but not uh, capitulate. And, Tom, we also have to contend with the geopolitical tensions between uh, the U.S. and China as well. Mm. Yeah, that's right. So a couple of interesting uh, developments over the last few days and weeks. One of them was uh, this pretty harshly worded statement that the White House put out uh, in respect to a demand from China around U.S. airlines and how they refer to Taiwan, Hong Kong and Macau. And the White House describing some of these demands from China as Orwellian and saying that the Communist Party of China was trying to uh, and, uh, affect the political views uh, of Americans. And this is something we've seen, by the way, on university campuses. Uh, in the U.S., not just airlines. So it is accurate, the White House pointing out, that the Communist Party is increasingly trying to uh, affect the views around some of these areas that China sees as sensitive subjects uh, beyond China's borders. So, yes, the White House lashing out at that, but also uh, a pretty strong uh, anger in the U.S. as to these reports around China apparently setting up uh, missile, cruise missile uh, systems in the Spratly Islands, part of the South China Sea, near to the Philippines. Again, the build-out of these uh, islands in the South China Sea, a source of, of tension geopolitically uh, between China and its neighbors, but also, of course, uh, the U.S. deeply concerned about developments in that area as well. So contending with trade issues and tensions as well as geopolitical uh, areas of friction between the U.S. and China.